I'm building a town in a wild western fantasy universe, and so far I've made 10 buildings. I've only got a few left before I call this project good, and after setting out all of the buildings that I've made, I realized something important was missing. The cowboys and outlaws of this town have no way to tell the time, which is a problem when you want to be prompt for a duel. I'll be adding roads and some dueling cowboys later on, but today I'm going to be adding a clock tower on the top of a nice big town hall. How's it going everyone? Welcome back to Boilai Hobby Time. This build began like most of my other town buildings, with some strips of balsa wood. After marking out the dimensions of my wall pieces, I sliced them with my X-Acto knife. A good tip to remember for balsa is that many light passes make cleaner cuts. The roof of this building will be angled with a false front on the street facing side. I textured all of the wood, impressing some fake panel lines and then scratching the surface to bring out the grain. I then marked out the positioning of the doors and the windows and carefully cut those out with my X-Acto knife. A good way to get clean interior cuts is to start in the corners. After all of the walls, windows, and doors had been cut, it was time to begin assembly. I wasn't sure how all of this was going to fit together because I didn't have a template or anything, I just had the plan inside my head. Uh, but when in doubt, just start gluing things together and hope for the best. It usually works out for me. The Wild Imaginary West is also supposed to feel a little bit kitbashed, so some imperfection is always good. After all of the wall sections were glued together, I filled all the windows with some frames and began adding other details like a front porch with some steps and a decorative balcony above the front door. After adding some unnecessary railings to my decorative balcony, I gave it some unnecessary support beams to make it look more structurally sound. I then added some genuine structural integrity to the building using some thicker beams of balsa, and I followed that up with the roof. Once the structure of the building had been boxed in, I threw on some little details and trim pieces, and then it was time to move on to the clock tower. Off camera, I cut an angle out of two wall sections to match the top of the roof, and then I mitered four small pieces at 45 degree angles on each end to make a walkway near the middle of the clock tower. I glued some strips in place to act as brackets for the walkway to rest on, then I slid the walkway onto the tower, satisfyingly, and glued the tower to the roof. After that, I added some stairs and a landing to the back of the building on the second floor, and an additional few steps to the exit on the lower floor. I found this nice textured sheet of styrene in the pre-owned and clearance bin at a local model train store, which I cut to shape and glued in place on the roof. I worked my way around the building, adding little details, including a railing to the flat sections of the roof, and I didn't have enough of the ladder pieces that I was using to make the railing, so I made a spot where some damage had taken place uh, and had been repaired, which was a great opportunity for some storytelling. With all of the structural details complete, it was time to move on to the fun details, starting with the clock face. I stole this clock face from an old watch of mine, which happened to be exactly the right size to fit in this space, which I had not measured previously. I cut up some styrene into the hands of the clock and positioned them at one minute to high noon, which we all know is the most important moment of every day in the Wild West. I couldn't figure out why the hands weren't fitting in place, and it's because I hadn't drilled the hole yet. I then drilled a few more holes in some balsa sticks, which I added some styrene anchors to. These are the corner posts for the railing that will go on top of the tower. I drilled some corresponding holes on the top of the tower, and then I stuck those posts in place. I cut up a piece of styrene ladder cage, which I thought about putting on the top of the roof, but opted to use it a little later in the video. Instead, I added a small platform, which a control panel for the rooftop antenna is accessible. I then broke out my bits box and began the process of kit bashing the large four stall antenna from bits and pieces of random things that I've collected over the years. In universe, four stalls are the only thing that keep monsters away. The only reason a town like this could exist in the wild west without an absurd amount of firepower. I used some of these little bits that I got from a patron named Jared, and I was informed in my last video that they're called pogo pins, uh, but in this universe they're gun barrels and antennas. I arranged them in a Gundam beam rifle piece and I topped off the four stall with them. And for some additional cable, I cut up a guitar string and ran that along the outside of the building. Because this is a town hall, I wanted to keep the overall clutter to a minimum, so I didn't pile on the usual amount of greeblies and junk that the rest of the buildings have, just enough to bring it into the wild imaginary western setting. Like this piece of machinery here, which is made from that ladder cage that I cut up earlier. 
After sticking that in place on the flat section of the roof, the greebling was done. And I cleaned up my workstation. And it was time to begin painting. After the building had primed itself, I made sure that the primer was dry, and then I placed down an old hobby mat, and I broke out my airbrush. While I paint this, I'd like to do a little storytelling about this building, as well as say a huge thank you and give a shout out to all of my patrons whose names you see on screen. Most of the people of the Wild West moved out here to create new lives for themselves and to be free of rules, regulations, and the layers of pointless bureaucracy that have piled up in the cities and towns back east. So when this town got big enough that the town hall was deemed necessary, it obviously irked many of the people who used the town's amenities but whose lives did not center around the town itself, i.e. ranchers, hunters, trappers, miners, etc. One of those disgruntled locals, a miner by the name of Wallace, accidentally left his mule, how the locals refer to mechanized wagons, in gear which ran into the side of the brand new town hall during the grand opening ceremony. It made quite the scene and interrupted the mayor's speech, but no one was harmed. Wallace claimed it was an accident, but was given a fine for negligence, a fine which he never paid. Wallace was a difficult man after all, and nobody could really be bothered to try and get the money from him. It's been many years since the incident, but the damage on the building was only ever patched and never fully repaired. The mayor still holds a grudge for having his speech interrupted during what he claims was the best part. The building only functions as a town hall part of the time. The only reason it got funded in the first place was because the locals wanted a nice large clock that they could all set their watches to, as well as the large forestall on the tower. It's the largest in the town and provides a much wider range of safety from the local wildlife than any of the other buildings. After the building had been painted, I gave the ground a coat of brown paint and then I sprinkled on some sand and sealed it in place with some isopropyl alcohol and watered down white glue. Before I wrap up the town entirely, I will make sure that all of the buildings and the roads have the same standardized ground cover. The last thing to do was to paint the sides of the diorama with black 4.0. After that, I called it good. That is it for this video. Thank you all so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Huge shout out as always to my patrons. You guys are the best. Have an awesome week, everyone. I'll see you next time.